Hi, I've clicked onto today's tropical tidbit for Monday, May 4th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here we are, just the first week of May, and it's already time to start talking about the kickoff to the 2015 Atlantic hurricane season. There's an area of disturbed weather beginning to develop near Cuba and the Bahamas that will be moving north during the course of this week, and the NHC has issued a special tropical weather outlook for 30% chance of subtropical cyclone formation off the southeast U.S. coast during the next five days. And we're going to be talking about why that is, starting with the overall pattern, which is a very typical pattern for trouble brewing over tropical waters in the early or pre-season, uh, even here in the first week of May, this kind of pattern where we have this upper level trough negatively tilted over the eastern Gulf of Mexico, which means the axis of the trough tilts to, toward the west with latitude, is getting stuck beneath the main jet, which is well to the north here near the U.S.-Canadian border over New England, and that's because this ridge is starting to build over the eastern seaboard, and it will be amplifying over the next few days, and that's due to a couple of features out west. We have a short wave moving toward the Four Corners region, and then we have a long wave that's hard to see off the Pacific Northwest that's moving in. And if we look at the model representation of this, the GFS uh, valid tomorrow morning, Tuesday, we see the short wave over the four corners, the long wave coming into the Washington state. And what happens is the short wave moves northward on the eastern flank of the long wave, which digs into the west coast. The net result being that by Thursday, the entire trough really amplifies over the west, and in response, the ridge to the east also amplifies over the Great Lakes, New England, and the eastern seaboard. And so we get this banana-shaped ridge that's trapping this upper-level low off of the southeast coast and allowing it to meander with the surface low that starts developing on the model over the warm water there. And this is how we can get this non-tropical area of low pressure to start transitioning to subtropical because of all this warm water that will allow convection to fire. And uh, we have the Gulf Stream right off the coast, 26 to, 7, 26 to 27 Celsius water, warm enough for tropical type development. But uh, given that it's a subtropical type system, even the colder water here east of the Gulf Stream of about 23 degrees Celsius, you can get away with that with subtropical systems because the air aloft is usually colder than normal and uh, that changes the instability profile and allows you to get away with colder water and still get subtropical type convective development. And all this water here is about two to three Celsius warmer than it usually is during the first week of May, so it might as well be late May or the early June in terms of sea surface temperature here. So this is more than warm enough to allow convective development associated with this trough, which over the eastern Gulf right now is uh, causing a lot of divergence aloft over Cuba and the Bahamas, which is why this convective outbreak is ongoing as air accelerates off to the northeast, pulling mass out of the area. This is going to start pressure falls, which could generate a surface trough and perhaps eventually a closed low north of the Bahamas by Wednesday or Thursday. And if we do get a closed low here, that's when we can start getting a transition to a subtropical type system that could possibly acquire the name Anna by the NHC if it meets the designation criteria. Uh, and if we get this convective type system developing here in a closed fashion, then the potential exists for it to continue intensifying a little bit, because if we look at the upper level pattern forecasted on the model, this is out on early Thursday morning, we see the surface low developing east of Florida. Here's our negatively tilted trough over Georgia now, and you see the flow coming in, coming around, and then as it comes out the east side, notice how there's kind of a clockwise anticyclonic bend to it, as it comes out the east side of the trough, and that's because all this convection on the north and east side of the surface low is releasing latent heat in the upper atmosphere, which is rising pressures aloft and causing this air to bend anticyclonically on the east side of the trough as it leaves the system. So you get this divergent pattern to the north of the surface low, and this allows the convection to start wrapping around toward the northwest quadrant of the storm, and you can start getting this comma-shaped pattern of convection around the surface low. And if you look at the NAM, its representation of what the satellite picture could look like on late Wednesday evening shows this kind of process ongoing, where you have this comma-shaped pattern of thunderstorms 
where the surface low is actually here in the cloudless dry slot, which kind of looks like a frontal system the way this is set up, but this is typical of subtropical type development where the surface low initially has no convection over it, but the convection starts wrapping around it. And in this kind of a setup where you have this upper level trough sitting here, the winds eventually lighten so that the convection starts wrapping around. And if we go forward in time, you see the winds lightening aloft and you have this broad area of light winds, low wind shear, favorable for convection to start developing over the center of circulation itself. And you can see the anticyclonic outflow beginning to develop to the west and north. And if we actually get a system that looks like this on the model, it's not guaranteed we'll see a system develop just like this. But if we get a solid subtropical low with convection wrapping around the northwest side, then I think there is potential for it to go all the way to a warm core system and become a fully tropical storm with time. Given this pattern where this trough is stuck underneath the ridge to the north, sitting here over the warm Gulf Stream for what could be several days, it definitely provides the opportunity for development to continue. Right now, model forecasts do diverge on the intensity of this. All of them show what are realistically a rather weak system would be mostly a wet weather event for the Bahamas, Florida, and perhaps the coastlines of Georgia and the Carolinas. But the track of this, how close it gets to the coast, will determine how much wet weather makes it to the shoreline. And right now in a weak steering pattern where the low hasn't even formed yet, we're just talking about an area of clouds, it's impossible to say exactly where this might track. But wet weather could certainly affect the coastlines during the rest of this week. And if the system does develop as uh, the pattern suggests it could, we could be dealing with uh, a strengthening system that could bring wind impacts close to the coast uh, later this week. But right now that is very much uncertain and wet weather is the only guarantee with this one right now. Something to watch if you live in this area of the Southwest Atlantic over the next week. Keep an eye on the NHC Tropical Weather Outlooks for more information and I will continue to update you as things change as well. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.